hi Cheryl, it's great to meet you. Uh, thank thank you. you very much for coming out and uh, meeting with us today. Thanks for having me. Um, so it's been almost a year now since uh, the Olympics <laughs> happened and uh, the silver medal win and all that excitement that goes along with it. Yeah. Uh, can you share with us a little bit about some of your proudest memories? Well, the one thing I do say about the Olympics is if you were there, there's no need to say anything about them. And if you weren't there, it's impossible to explain. But you know, it, it was an amazing time for our entire team, and I think we, uh, you know, we had we had so many great moments that will keep coming back to us. We remember them and relive them. Standing on the podium and winning a medal for Canada, without a doubt, had to be the the best moment out there. Can you comment a little bit on? Uh your old team and how you're going to move forward and yeah. switch teams and go ahead. Well, it's going to be, you know, it, this is a little bit bittersweet, our, our old team. We're very close and, and when you accomplish a goal like we did, and it was a major journey for our team for six years of working together, um, you know, it's going to be hard to, to leave that and uh, we all became very close and have some great memories but you know it's time for each of us to move on and we have some individual things that we need to do so we've uh, Susan O'Connor and I have put together a new team going forward to Sochi um, for uh, for the trials for 2013 and it's with uh, Lori Olson from Edmonton who will be a fantastic player and uh, Jennifer Sadlier from Calgary so we're excited it's it's a new building process and and it's exciting to start looking forward to that. And I know you put in a lot of hours and a lot of training in this. How do you decide on how much you can sacrifice and how much it's worth? <laughs> family. You talk to family a lot. You you know, it really has to be a give and take with your family and it has to be good with them. And, you know, at times it's not always fair to them. Uh, you know, you, you're away a lot and you do commit a lot of your time and your life to this. But I have an amazing husband and fantastic stepkids and some incredible friends that support my dreams and they understand that that's a big part of me so so it's good you have to have that or it's impossible to accomplish what you do and after uh, the Olympics you published a book called Between the Sheets and I think that must have been just a reaction of how hectic your schedule was and how to really um, uh, sort through everything and it was you know and it, it's kind of more of a sports psychology book about the mental side of the game and what you need to do as an athlete to kind of control the emotions and deal with the stresses and and then we put some inside stories in there um, about our run to the Olympics and, and the Olympic trials and so it was uh, it was kind of um, therapeutic to write the book it was great to be able to bring up all the memories and um, and also address one of the biggest things that I think you know made the difference for our team was the mental side of the game. So how does the physical aspect come in? How much training do you put in? Curling doesn't really seem like the most physically demanding sport. No, I mean I think that's changed not that f curling has become physically demanding but in the last probably five or six years you notice that the players are more and more fit and I think people have started to realize you to handle that stress and that pressure and play three game days, you have to be in shape. You have to be able to handle, your body has to be able to handle it. So, and I'm probably one of the older athletes at the Olympics, so you have to train even harder to stay up with the younger athletes out there. So, you know, I do a lot of training with a trainer. I do a lot of cross training where I'm, you know, working on core, working on just your um, cardio, strength training, just everything to keep at my optimal levels. And how does supplementation fit into that? I'm a huge uh, person on supplementation. It's just another, I think it's another tool that you have that kind of brings you and, and yourself to the table to be the best that you can be. And so, um, you know, I'm always looking for something to work at. Um, Anti-inflammatory, that's a big thing with me because I do train so much. So supplementation is important and I'm always researching and always wanting to get involved with the products that are going to assist me to be the best, which is uh, what brings us to Sierra. So. I had a long year training this year and I was starting to have some knee problems which I've never had before and I think it was just overuse and overtraining and um, so I started to take the the joint formula and I've noticed amazing things with my knee and not as much pain and I'm sure um, you know that's going to continue to even improve as I continue to take it for longer. Do you have any tips for young girls in curling or people who 
uh, would like to take it more seriously and maybe look at a professional career in curling? You know, I think it, it maybe and it 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 it, it cross is to all sports is just to pursue your dreams and believe in it. Um, if you want it, believe that you can do it. And it might take time. Uh, you know, I was 43 when I went to my first Olympics, which, you know, maybe is later in life, but I believed all those years that it could happen. And I think for anybody in any sport they love, you know, believe it can happen, believe in yourself and pursue your dreams. Thanks for watching. Uh, you can follow Team Bernard on our Team Bernard website, Twitter, and our Facebook at Team Bernard. I am Melanie with Sierra Cell. Thanks for watching. And for more information on the product, you can visit us at sierracell.ca and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.